Welcome again to our uh, Never Graph Community Meeting. So today, um, I will give, uh, apart from the project Harpies, I will personally give uh, topics around fraud detection with Graph. And I will share some progress on uh, Never Graph and uh, Deep, Deep Graph library uh, integration works uh, for myself too. Um, yeah, um, let's int introduce ourselves first. Um, this is Wei, um, from the VSOP team. I'm working on the Never Graph community. And, uh, yeah, how about you, John? Hey, uh, Wei, uh, nice to see you again. Um, this is John, um, uh, from also from VSOP. Um, I'm also working on the uh, Nebula Graph uh, community. Um, so uh, even though there's only two of us, so hopefully some of our other members will find time to join us uh, yeah. later on. So uh, let's okay. keep rolling. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. So we will have this meeting every four weeks. And uh, so anyone would like to share anything. I made this, I want to uh, share uh, with you something I want to discuss with you. I would like to, if possibly we can invite someone from the community, just let us know. So anything about Never Graph or your uh, graph things are welcome to the community. Um, yeah, I will start with Project Heartbeats. Uh, one of the uh, small announcements is that we will have another uh, minor uh, release uh, in upcoming days. So there will be some hot fixes. Um, yeah, and uh, for our core uh, site, uh, we have a bunch of uh, newly merged um, uh, PRs and uh, these are only uh, the major ones. Uh, one of our uh, community contributor uh, uh, fixed uh, fixed this uh, uh, issues, um, and uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, optimizations. For example, uh, this is uh, these two are related to the uh, the K hoop queries. Uh, it's worth to be mentioned that uh, we. Uh, Initially, we changed our third party, which is our, uh, we include all the third party uh, projects in, in those uh, repo, which is our uh, de dependent when we want to uh, comply a uh, network graph. Uh, we used to change it to uh, 5.0, but late, late, uh, later we uh, rolled back to uh, 3.1, if I recall correctly. Yeah, this is re related to K-Hub uh, optimization. And uh, this is a new interface uh, in, in the storage layer. So it's addressing uh, some uh, specific Go queries where we want to squeeze more uh, uh, performance. It's, it's slightly, slightly uh, uh, same as uh, another uh, existing uh, in interface, but this is more optima in certain cases. And we have like, uh, this is for uh, count uh, star optimization, and this is another uh, yet another op op uh, optimization uh, rules uh, to put filters down in, in the inner drawing case. Um, oh, this is this one relies on uh, this change, of course. Uh, yeah, if you are interested, just uh, check out our GitHub repository. I'm not good. I'm not going to dive into all the uh, changes. Uh, so on the other side, uh, this is uh, just some surrounding uh, projects of the community. The first one is uh, we uh, open sourced uh, this project. So it's a front end project handling uh, one of our commercial uh, proprietary uh, projects. So we open source the core part. It's related to rendering your uh, DAGs or uh, uh, flow charts uh, in the browser. And another one is uh, Studio have uh, another uh, minor release with the battle handling on the uh, connections. Um, and our um, uh, community maintained a project called NG Batties. So you can tell it's related to my Batties. 
uh, the, the, it's act, act, actively maintained and uh, uh, evolved in last couple of weeks. We have a bunch of new PRs merged. Uh, another thing worth to mention is Nebula Python. So in this project, uh, one of our new uh, contributors have uh, raised and merged two PRs. So it's related to um, more easily handling the return results value types. So we firstly introduced the casting uh, in this SDK. So it's quite sweet uh, change. Another thing is uh, uh, I am work I was I had been working on a, a side project called Nebula DGL and this this is this is a, a, another uh, topic today I will share later so you can do something around Nebula Graph plus the DGL. So this is a, a, a paper that's in archive.org. So if you are interested, uh, you can check out. It's uh, the author are uh, guides from our team. So it's related to the design of Nebula Graph. Uh, the final one is uh, last week, we, uh, we uh, add uh, another release format uh, deliverable for the Nebula Graph HTTP gateway. So previously, uh, we used to have these Docker images uh, being released for this project, but uh, we we forgot to add them for about last two releases because uh, we decoupled this project uh, in our studio projects. So now in studio, we don't rely on this project, so we forgot to add to the release of this project. And uh, uh, we, we make it, uh, so previously you have to use the binary packages for HTTP gateway, but now it's come back. You can still get, get uh, Docker pool from the Docker hub. So it's, if you are using it, check out, it's easier. Um, yeah, and this part is, uh, um, so in the future I will have like uh, every uh, two or three months, I will give this topic share on, maybe not necessarily by me, but uh, we will have some more specific uh, roadmap uh, being reviewed. So this is uh, some uh, planned uh, features that we would like to address in next cycle. Uh, I will give it quite uh, briefly. So if you have any questions, just uh, comment on YouTube or um, you know uh, drop a discussion uh, thread in GitHub or Slack. Uh, the first one is finally we uh, we will support the filtering of the uh, vertex properties for uh, find path and get subgraph. Um, yeah, it's requested by many already, and we will have um, some more uh, find path performance optimizations. Third one is uh, we will provide the session pool for our officially supported uh, clients. And as I know, there is an ongoing T, uh, PR on Nebula Go uh, today. So but it's still work in progress. So please expect uh, uh, most of the clients comes with the session pool uh, officially in uh, like two months. Um, we will redesign our uh, tag last or uh, their vertex behaviors um, in next release. So ideally, um, we'll remove this concept because it brings some burden to users and uh, not really, there are certain scenarios that we actually need it. And uh, uh, around the studio, plus the uh, Navigraph Graph Explorer, so studio, you can consider studio as the um, Explorer Lite. Uh, we will have the uh, virtualization for the graph modeling. So you can drag and drop and create your uh, schema. And finally, and uh, we will have some other optimizations like we will support a comment in, in, in a uh, console inside of the studio and the explorer. And uh, we will have some optimization in, in batch executions. The final one is about Nebula Graph dashboard. And uh, we will have some more uh, features. One of them is uh, uh, we will support a metric search in the dashboard. 
Um, yeah, then uh, we come to um, we come to the first topic. Uh, this is about uh, fraud detection with graph. So I uh, recently I did some research to um, compose a, a blog post around how we should how we could uh, do uh, the fraud detection thing with the graph tag and uh, mostly together uh, tying with the uh, graph database. And uh, I studied some of the set of art uh, methods and pro approaches and uh, provide you some um, sort of a summary uh, and a playground that you can actually get a hands dirty. So um, there are more details in, in this URL. So I, I translated the origin the Chinese or, um, uh, blog into English uh, today. Um, so I will start with the graph modeling. So what is fraud detection? So it's basically, uh, so fraud exists in, in, in different industries. For example, in the FinTech, um, if a transaction comes to the system, you want to know if this, uh, the, the owner of this uh, the account of this uh, transaction behind is uh, is not a fraud. And in case you can have a high confidence to say yes, probably to prevent it from proceeding uh, will you know, save a lot of money. Uh, so in, in this kind of cases, um, graph can help and it's already it's proven to be quite performant. Uh, so this is a, a sample uh, graph modeling, but it's not related to the transaction, but uh, related to the uh, loan, you can, as you can tell. So basically we will set up this uh, uh, knowledge graph on the certain um, entities that may be related. For example, you want to uh, record every, uh, everything around the applicant and uh, some uh, information uh, about application. Um, and if if your system is mostly online, you will have some uh, devices or media um, related with those application uh, um, actions. And you have more information, either it comes from the application itself or some, some other uh, sources uh, you can uh, grab uh, like um, the, the cooperation, the workplaces or some education in information or the phone number, uh, et cetera. So if you put everything in this graph, you can do something interesting and that will share you later. So for example, you can, you can simply um, do uh, queries for example, this, this is a query that uh, um, help you check from certain, uh, say when a transaction comes or when loan uh, application comes and you can query on certain people or certain applicants uh, with the a queries like this. So it, it will help you find um, all the the other uh, existing uh, information uh, with uh, shared device or shared um, phone numbers. So in this single query, you 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 could tell uh, one thing is the the orange node here is actually a phone number. You can see with phone number, so the word is quite small. Uh, and anyway, so this is a typical. Uh, um, scenario that after your query, you, you could tell that uh, there is one um, applicant, or, uh, there is one uh, phone number associated with, uh, associated with, with uh, a lot of different other uh, people. So in this case, you will, uh, you probably will see this uh, phone number is uh, risky. And from that, you can uh, ideally um, further an, uh, analysis, uh, analysis uh, other related uh, people. And uh, in case uh, this phone is uh, connected with your new uh, applicant, so 
you can mark it as high risky or even reject it. So this is one of the typical uh, use case that you can simply use a graph query to help you um, uh, evaluate the, the, the risk level. So uh, there are actually a, a bunch of different queries you can do that. And some of them are based on your experience, some of uh, or your um, risk control expertise or certain patterns that you uh, you summarized, right? Uh, another part is you, or you already have a bunch of labels like uh, certain devices, certain people or certain cooperation or, or mask uh, as a high risk uh, flag. So in that case, you can simply query something like this, uh, like uh, if it's somehow related to uh, connected to another um, applicant uh, were already uh, marked as fraud or even uh, phone number, etc. And uh, that's another uh, typical queries you can identify uh, frauds. Um, so well, one of the um, one of the issues is uh, sometimes you don't have enough labels, right? Or you don't have access to, uh, or you are co-start your projects and uh, your compliance um, uh, requirements uh, don't allow you to, uh, you know, connect to other data that uh, comes with some labels. So like, for example, you only have uh, like 20 uh, labeled data, but you have, uh, uh, millions of uh, uh, vertexes. So how do you uh, leverage? So this seems quite uh, useful and uh, performance, but to, in the real world, you may not have the um, luck to have this label. But So what can you do? Uh, you have a bunch of uh, approaches to help you uh, extend from a limited number of labels to have more, uh, ideally have more labels. Like you can do uh, some graph algorithms. Um, one of them I consider quite uh, useful uh, is called the label uh, spread. So basically, uh, actually, I, I have a full um, full solution uh, with the code implementation in in, in my uh, blog post. I'm not I'm not going to dive into in in this uh, session. But if you are interested, you can check out. So um, this is similar to our, uh, you know, a well-known the common label propagation, but it's slightly different. Um, the use, uh, the purpose of this uh, label uh, propagation here, uh, or we call it a label spread. So it is firstly uh, named in this term in, in the initial uh, papers. Um, so the purpose uh, of this uh, label spread thing was just to address the scenario I mentioned uh, before. Like uh, you have a limited number of nodes marked as fraud and you want to fully leverage your existing uh, information in, in your uh, graph. Uh, maybe uh, in a similar uh, module as I mentioned before. Uh, and uh, in theory, you will know um, this information can help you lead some uh, conclusions like the other, uh, some, of, some of other nodes can be treated as uh, risky as well based on the, your limited ones as a starting point. So this is, algorithm is helping, do, uh, helping to doing so. So ideally you can uh, first doing this uh, algorithms uh, like every week and help you uh, extend your um, accumulated, uh, limited uh, label nodes. And uh, on top of that, you can ap uh, apply uh, some query-based, uh, rule-based, pattern-based uh, fraud detection. So this is another interesting method um, with graph. And uh, after you, uh, you computed those labels, the best way is just the written to write them back to the uh, graph database because you can query them on demand in, in real time, right? Okay, so next I uh, introduced some other uh, uh, methods 
um, are uh, machine learning uh, related. Uh, so you can uh, roughly uh, divide them into two. So one is the legacy machine learning uh, methods plus the graph features. So this is uh, this is a or, uh, already a quite mature uh, methods uh, brought uh, a couple of years before that uh, previously you don't consider, you don't use anything around graph. You just have everything in your uh, data or volume or databases. And uh, you train, uh, you do some feature engineering to pick like 50 of the data uh, of the properties of, of your uh, tables are related to the uh, fraud. And you train a, a machine learning module, um, maybe just uh, 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 to uh, separate those, um, to predict uh, who are uh, in high risk uh, of fraud. Um, so the, the only difference here is uh, plus, uh, plus on top of those uh, features, you just compute like, for example, uh, graph related uh, structure um, things, like you compute every node's uh, page rank. So put the page rank value as another feature. And uh, it was proven uh, that uh, this certain method is better performant. It's more performant than the legacy uh, non-graph feature uh, machine learning algorithms. Because, for example, page rank, it reflects the importance of certain nodes. And that importance information is related for, is related uh, to the, you know, the the case that we want to detect fraud. Uh, you can leverage not only uh, the the uh, page rank, maybe some some other uh, community detection uh, algorithms could also help. But in that case, you don't want to put the you know the ID or label of the nodes as your feature. Maybe you want to use some date wise. Uh, uh, features, but that will help you because the uh, the community uh, graph uh, information is also related to if it's fraud, right? So this is the first approach. So the second one is uh, uh, the graph neural networks are related um, uh, approaches. So this this method com comparing to the first one uh, can be uh, you know helpful because when it actually uh, the NGN we actually embedding the, uh, the 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 whole graph into um, agency metrics. So although it's uh, embedding, but it uh, it uh, uh, remains a, a bunch of uh, graph related information like the locality, how this node are um, directly or two hoops uh, connected to other nodes. Uh, so in in this um, in this uh, representation and plus the 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 methods in the GNN, uh, it massively uh, consider the information um, hiding in the in the whole graph comparing to the. Uh, the legacy uh, graph feature machine learning uh, methods. So another thing is uh, with the GN approach, um, you don't have to do a bunch of um, feature engineering comparing to the, the, the other one, but you do, you, you still need some sort of feature engineering, but uh, it's a lot more easier uh, based on the observation uh, and the research. And uh, those two uh, approaches are uh, comes with some more details and uh, even playground uh, uh, in action uh, content in, in my blog post, so you can check out. And uh, actually, for the GN uh, uh, case, I I provide you an end-to-end -end solution. So this is the uh, whole thing of this uh, approach. So basically, in the left side, I uh, I make uh, this is the architecture or a flowchart on how we um, we use a node uh, classification uh, approach uh, 
to help us um, learn the learn a function from the existing graph. We have a graph that some of the nodes are marked as uh, uh, as fraud. And uh, after we learn this this uh, GN module, uh, this module is a function that you can give a subgraph and it will help you predict uh, all the nodes in the subgraph if those nodes are categorized as fraud or not. Um, I in this in this example, I'm using a, a graph algorithms that you can uh, train your module with the old graph, and you can feed and consume this module with a whole new uh, data. And uh, so the right side is how we we are going to leverage this module. Um, so and uh, so. Imagine we have this module trained here, and in in the in the online fraud detection system based on this module, uh, when we have this uh, transaction or uh, a reveal from Yelp uh, sent into the system, the first thing uh, in the system we will going to insert everything related to the graph to our uh, network graph uh, knowledge graph. And the second thing is we want to uh, get a subgraph related sitting close to this new newly added nodes. So we have a smaller subgraph, like have 3000 nodes and a bunch of connections among them, sorry. And then we will send this small uh, subgraph to our uh, inference API where underlying we are calling our trained uh, module, JN module. And uh, this module will help you predict uh, whether your newly added node are considered uh, high, high risk um, or not. So this is a, I made a, I even made a front end for this project so you can actually see what is happening. So the, the, the upper side of, is the uh, dashboard or uh, user interface of this system, online system. You can see the, this is a table. So every time you have some, a bunch of uh, uh, queries that uh, this one uh, would like to give the uh, underlying this fraud, um, uh, fraud projects, I'm leveraging a, a public, a real world uh, data set called Yelp data set. So Yelp, so because this is related to Yelp, so uh, every transaction here is not actually a transaction. It's a review of a given restaurant or hotel. So uh, this newly added re review send us to here. First, uh, we will query from another graph to get its related subgraph. And then we will send this, this uh, uh, subgraph information to the inference API and the inference API will uh, feed this um, subgraph to the module, and then we will send back the information. And finally, we will update your front end uh, with the socket IO. So you can watch out. The, the upper side is the uh, console. Uh, I, I want to emulate, emu uh, simulate the, the, the query. And you will see this, uh, this section, it will have the, the log. Okay, I will show you the demo. Yeah, so the query was sent, and this is, is if you are familiar with the, the machine learning thing, you will notice this is the uh, how you want to processing the uh, the data in in, in the uh, PyTorch or DGL, and then you will feedback the uh, prediction, and uh, you can see now it's too fast. Uh, now there is an actual line here regarding this newly added uh, record. And it's marked as is fraud false. So this is the you know end to end demo, and you you can have every every line of code in GitHub and everything in details are um, described in, in my blog post if you are interested. And for anything you like to discuss further, just ping me or uh, you know uh, comment on the blog or or, uh, or or discuss it in in our community. So this is the full uh, view of this uh, article. And every method I uh, briefly uh, introduced the, 
were uh, described here. Uh, so uh, be sure to check out if you are interested. And uh, yeah, this is the um, uh, the first topic. And the second one is related DGL work. Um, actually, in the uh, last demo, I uh, heavily used this uh, DGL thing. So DGL is the um, kind of the most popular uh, deep learning uh, library uh, out there is open source. And uh, you can, uh, so this topic is, is about uh, how we, uh, we can leverage DGL to working with your nebula graph. So um, I didn't prepare um, uh, slides for this, but uh, this is the, uh, the key point of this uh, topic. Uh, this is a, a pro uh, project called Nebula DGL and uh, it's literally uh, means the the adapter or connector between uh, Nebula Graph and the DGL. So uh, with that, you can you can train your um, your DNN uh, module on your um, graph persistent in, in Nebula Graph, and that's quite uh, straightforward and easy. So uh, ideally. Uh, if you have or your data already in your nebula graph, something like this, and you can have uh, put, you can uh, load your uh, graph in nebula graph in just uh, like three lines of code. It's quite easy, and you can run demo and playground uh, here, or you can refer to my uh, uh, my fraud detection uh, projects uh, too. So they are all based on nebula graph and DGL. Uh, so speaking of um, how you like to, um, you know, uh, your DGL module will um, do things on top of your one of your graph on uh, saved in Nebula graph, but how you would like to map them. So this is the uh, most in, important thing. So this is the, how I designed the, uh, the Nebula loader API. So. I design it in, into a, a YAML based configuration file. So basically, you want to um, tell Nebula Graph uh, DGL that uh, which uh, tag or which edge type uh, of data you want to extract or load from Nebula Graph. And uh, you know uh, that in GNN, every graph are um, number based. Uh, but you don't have to worry about your vertex ID, even this string type, uh, Nebula Graph DGL will help you to handle that dirty work and map it. it uh, it's transparent, but uh, when it comes to property, you know, we need to um, make our um, graph features um, in number format, either it's uh, float or uh, int, but uh, you cannot take a string but uh, in real world, a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, properties are by nature string, so you need to do the transformation. So previously, you uh, you can do with, without uh, Nebula uh, without uh, Nebula uh, DGL, you can do this by your ETL or pipeline. You you have some big data infrastructure. Uh, you uh, ex extract information from Nebula Graph and you make uh, uh, some uh, transforming uh, tasks and uh, like uh, mapping your string or other typed uh, properties into your number uh, typed uh, features. But uh, with Nebula Graph EGL, you, you can just describe them directly uh, in, in my mapping uh, API. So I introduced uh, three types of mapping or filtering. Uh, one of them is a function. So you can put, for example, here, I want to inject uh, all the vertex uh, uh, intact layer, and I want to extract uh, the feature based on age. So age are number already, but I want to make it normalized so I can write this uh, uh, lambda function to just to make every age to um, 
to have is uh, normalized to be smaller one than one. Uh, so this is one type of uh, 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 transformation. Another type is just to give the uh, 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 bare uh, value. So for example, here I want to extract the follow edge and I just keep the, uh, the value itself. So yeah, the, the degree of the, the, the degree is a, a number uh, int properties will be your uh, one of the feature in your uh, follow type uh, edge. So another type that, in fact, you can do every kind of um, transformation with the function, but uh, I introduced another type of uh, mapping called uh, uh, enumeration. So for example, this in, in this case, I want to uh, extract load uh, team, the vertex with the team tag. And uh, one of the feature I want to use is called coast. So that means uh, I list all the uh, West Coast and the East Coast team uh, emissions. And so those ones will be mapped at zero and those ones be mapped at one. So uh, that's fair, right? That's straightforward. So these are uh, now uh, we, uh, I designed these three types of the transformations. So this is the most of, uh, of the progress for now. So in the future, I will add more uh, things. For example, we don't have the, mm, the capability to uh, make your data save written back to natural graph. So I will that, add that feature in the future. And uh, there are some uh, many more things that uh, still need to be done. So this is a very uh, initial uh, proof of concept state. So if you're interested in uh, using network graph with DGL, just be sure to let us know and or you, you can help us to improve this project and uh, let me know if you want to make some uh, contributions on this. So this is the, um, the everything I would like to share uh, today. And uh, I think uh, I come to the end of my uh, session shared. So uh, we don't have too much going. Yeah. And uh, the, yeah, so uh, any questions, John, uh, about the, the hey. topics? Yeah, thank you very much for putting this up together. Um, so so mm -hmm. it's very good sharing, um, even though it's only two of us uh, for now, um, due to time zone differences, uh, the recording will be shared very soon, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. So, um, Let's see you in uh, next four weeks. So uh, ideally, we will have uh, some guys from other open source community in, in next uh, meetup from the uh, uh, Apache API 6. So uh, be sure to uh, join us uh, if you are interested in that um, project. Yeah. Um, so yeah, please find us on meetup.com, GitHub, or Slack channel. Um. So drop any ask, drop any question or ask. Uh, on either of those channels. So we'll we'll be very happy to get back to you. Yeah. 